Peter Ferdinand Drucker, 1909 to 2005. Peter Ferdinand Drucker was an Austrian American management consultant, educator, and author whose writings contributed to the foundations of modern management theory. Six major contributions to management by Drucker. First point, nature of management. Drucker's aim of management was creative or innovate which could be done in the form of combining old and new ideas or developing new ideas or encouraging others to innovate. He treated management as a discipline as well as profession. As a discipline, management has its own tools, skills, techniques and approaches. Thus, Drucker may be placed in empirical school of management. As a profession, it places emphasis that managers should not only have skills and techniques, but should have the right perspective putting things into practice. They should be good practitioners so that they can understand the social and cultural requirements of various organizations and countries. Second point, management functions. According to Drucker, management is the key organ of any organization. It has no existence and no functions in itself. Management can be seen through its task. The manager must perform certain functions to enable the institution to make its contribution for first point, the specific purpose and mission of the institution, whether business, hospital or university. Second, making work productive and the worker achieving. Third, managing social impact and social responsibilities. Thus, the manager is an administrator as well as an entrepreneur. Drucker specified eight areas where objective has to be set. They are as follows. Market standing, innovation, productivity, physical and financial resources, profitability, managerial performance and development, worker performance and attitude, and public or social responsibility. Third point, organization structure. Organization structure is an indispensable means to achieve business performance and business results and the wrong structure can impair business performance and may even destroy it. According to Drucker, bureaucratic structure of management does not function properly. Therefore, it needs to be replaced. He put forward three basic features of an effective organization structure which is as follows. First point, the institution should be structured to achieve maximum performance. Second, it should contain at least possible number of managerial levels. Third, it must be responsible for testing and training of future top managers. Drucker identified three basic aspects in organizing 
activity analysis, decision analysis, and relation analysis. Activity analysis explains the work that has to be done, what kind of work needs to be done, and what importance is to be given to each activity in the organization structure. Decision analysis determines or decides at which level a decision can be made. It depends on four aspects of a decision. The degree of futurity in the decision, the impact of decision over other functions, number of qualitative factors that enter into it, and whether the decision is periodically recurrent or rare. Relation analysis assists in defining the organizational structure and also to give guidance in manning the structure. Fourth, federalism. Drucker advocated the concept of federalism. Federalism refers to centralized control in a decentralized structure. Decentralized structure goes beyond the delegation of authority. He held the view that there exist close links between the decisions adopted by the top management on one hand and by the autonomous unit on the other hand. It is similar to the relationship between federal government and state governments. In a federal organization, local management should participate in the decision that set the limits of their own authority. Federalism brings positive values over other methods of organizing which are as follows. First point, it allows the top management freedom to focus on important functions. Second, it defines the roles and responsibilities of the employees. Third, it sets a benchmark to calculate the success and efficiency of employees. Fourth, it helps to resolve the problem of continuity through giving the managers of various units education in top management problems and functions while in an operating position. Fifth point, management by objectives. MBO is one of the important contribution of Drucker to the discipline of management. He introduced this concept in 1954 in his book, The Practice of Management. MBO is a strategic management model that aims to improve the performance of an organization by clearly defining objectives that are agreed to by both management and employees. According to the theory, having a say in goal setting and action plans encourages participation and commitment among employees as well as aligning objectives across the organization. He is therefore regarded as the father of management. MBO is also known as management by planning. MBO was modified by Schley, which has been called as management by results. MBO has become a popular way of managing and therefore regarded as the most modern management approach. The execution of this process comprises 
of the following steps as shown in the diagram. First point, defining objectives. The company heads determine or revise organizational objectives. These goals are derived from the firm's mission and vision. Setting of objectives is not only critical to the success of any company, but it also serves a variety of purpose. Second, defining specific objectives. Once the goals are set and the organization's objectives, plan and strategies to follow are shared with the employees, from top to bottom, the managers should encourage their employees to set their personal objectives to be achieved within a specific time with available resources. Thus, this will help to achieve the larger organizational objectives, make them feel like a part of the organization and help them stay motivated. Smart goals for a company has to be set up for achieving its task and preventing failure and diminishing the morale of employees. The goals should be A. Specific. It cannot be vague. For example, who is going to be part of the team? Or why are you doing this? B. Measurable. Need to assess. For example, how will you assess achievement, number of people attending the event or the number of people visiting your web page. C. Acceptable. The method or tools used to reach your goal. If it is not available, what do you need? D. Realistic. The goals must be realistic, otherwise Goals can never be met. E. Time bound. What is the timeline to meet your goals? Backward planning gives a big picture and helps to identify all that needs to be done. Third, monitoring the process. It is essential for monitoring the performance and progress of each employee in the organization at all times as results determine the future plans. It prevents the management from losing track of progress and spotting flaws in the process early to avoid failures. Fourth, evaluating the performance. It's essential to use solid metrics to evaluate the performance. Organizations should define boundaries for what is acceptable, what is successful and what could be the failure. Success should be rewarded and failure needs to be addressed. Fifth, feedback. Performance reviews are a routine review of the success or failure of employees within an organization. If the employees do well, they should be rewarded. This motivates them to keep up the good work. The employees who do not achieve the goals need to figure out their flaws and come up with a strategy to overcome the flaws and improve. Thus, management of objective stands for A. Communication and clarity when defining the goals of an organization. B. Realistic goals and metrics to create objectives that will be achieved by the employee. C. Giving employees a fair understanding of their responsibilities. D. 
transparency and efficiency improves e human resources are used in an efficient manner let us understand management of objectives with the help of an example the objectives of the management of the kabaddi team is to win national championship in a period of 6 years this objective is conveyed to the team members as well as the coach now the team members and the coach sit together and decide their objectives objective 1 is winning the fifth place in the second year in the national championship objective second winning third place in the fourth year in the national championship objective 3 is winning the national championship in the sixth year thus fulfilling the objectives of the management if the kabaddi team is unable to secure fifth place in the second year in the national championship then attempts will be made to improve their playing skills so that the second objective will be realized if the team wins the national championship in the 6th year they will be rewarded and if they fail they will come up with a strategy to overcome the flaws and improve many companies have used mbo for example hewlett packard xerox dupont and intel managements have praised the effectiveness of mbo for their success advantages of mbo they are as follows first one communication there is better communication between management and employees because they work as a team to fulfill the process of objective set up by the organization second increases productivity productivity of an organization increases because it continuously evolves the process which leads to the success of the company third minimizes ambiguity it enhances transparency and efficiency of the management which improves productivity because of minimum ambiguity fourth career development it highlights area in which employees need further training leading to career development fifth doing well the system of periodic evaluation enables the subordinates know how well they are doing sixth improves morale the subordinates are involved in the organizational goals this improves their morale and commitment disadvantages of mbo they are as follows first point paperwork there is considerable paperwork which takes too much of the manager's time too many meetings and reports add to the manager's responsibility and burden some managers may resist the program because of increased paperwork second managers not skilled some managers may not be skilled in interpersonal interaction such as coaching and counseling which is required third group goal difficult to achieve when the goals of one department depends on the goals of another department cohesion is difficult to achieve fourth strain it can cause burn out as it puts strain on employees to meet the goals set by management fifth ignores 
certain areas. Management focuses only on areas where MBO is applicable and ignores company culture, work ethos, environmental issues, areas for involvement and contribution and interpersonal activities. Sixth point, organizational changes. Drucker held the view that rapid technological development will bring rapid change in society. He was not against change but was concerned about the impact of rapid change on human life. Some changes can be observed by the organization but not the rapid changes. Since rapid changes occur in society, people should develop ways to face the changes and take them as challenges for making the society better.